Hello everyone, welcome to a new series for developers who are interested in developing with Experience Cloud and Lightning Web Runtime sites. In this third episode, we will look at an essential part of any web experience. We will look at providing our users a user interface to navigate our site. This may sound simple, but with LWR sites, it's not so simple. So let's dive in. In our first episode, I mentioned that we will talk in our series about what you can and what you can't do with LWR sites. And providing our users with, for example, a navigation bar is one of those things. Because when we say the LWR template is a build your own template, we mean it that way. It is build your own. To explain better what that actually means for you, let's first have a look at a pre-built template. We are back in Experience Builder. What you see here is the standard Aura-based site for help portals. If you don't know Aura, it is our previous web framework before we introduced Lightning Web Components. As it is obviously visible, this template already comes with a lot of pre-built functionality. What I want to highlight here is the navigation bar. It comes out of the box for this template and when we click on it, we can easily configure it. Currently, the default navigation is selected, which consists out of the menu items Home and Topics. Let's add another entry. We add a new menu item, give it a name, let's say Developer. Then we select the type, for example, External URL, and then we enter the URL. A great choice would be developer.salesworld.com. Now, before we hit Save, I want you to focus on the different data elements of this menu item. The name, the type, and then optional parameters like the URL if the type is an external website. We will need this knowledge later when we build our own navigation. For now, let's save the menu item and within a second our menu item shows up within the pre-built navigation bar. Okay, that was easy. Basically, with a couple of clicks we could build our navigation. If we have a pre-built navigation. Now let's dive into what we will have to do for replicating this for an LWR site. Building a navigation can be as simple as hard coding everything into a Lightning Web Component. And that would take away the flexibility of what you would get from Experience Builder. In an ideal world, we would provide a similar experience, a visual component that would be data driven by the navigation menus, which are configured via Experience Builder. Actually, what should stop us from building it that way? Let me show you quickly, for example, how one of our custom-built navigation components for the AZ Insurance marketing site looks like. At the top, we have the navigation menu component. This one is custom-built, and you can find it here in Experience Builder in the list of custom components. Now, when I click on it, I get also a custom property editor, just like with a pre-built component. I can select the menu that should be displayed, I can customize in real time the button label, and more. To build all of this, let's first dissect what we actually need. For sure, we need a Lightning Web Component that displays the navigation and that allows the visual property configuration in Experience Builder. Then we will need an Apex class that retrieves from our environment the list of available navigation menus. Otherwise, well, there is not much to pick for our visual configuration, right? And then we will also need another Apex class that is called from our Lightning Web Component to get the actual menu item entries from the configured navigation menu, all during runtime. Now, so far so good? Let's go to the demo and see what code we have to craft. We are here in Visual Studio Code and we look at the metadata configuration file of our navigation menu Lightning Web Component. To create the visual property configuration, we set up a so-called target configuration. And the first property is key for us. As you can see, we have a specific attribute data source here. This attribute allows us to specify an Apex class in our environment. And with that, drive a dynamic pick list for our visual property editor. So let's check out this class. It extends the abstract dynamic pick list class, which is system provided to display pick list values in property editors. The getValues method contains the logic to build the list of menu entries. Navigation menus are stored as navigation link set records. So we're fetching here the master label for the visual display, that's what I will select, 
and the unique developer name as selection value for each picklist row. And if you want to only show menus that are configured in the current experience site, you can extend the SOCL query to query for the network ID of the site. Now let's bring up a side-by-side -side between our Lightning Web component and another Apex class. The component invokes the Apex method getNavigationMenuItems with the name of the stored menu item. In that Apex method, two things happen. First, it fetches the navigation link set based on the past developer name and it does it via SOCL. And then it runs another SOCL query to fetch a sorted list of the individual navigation entries with their relevant fields, like label, access restriction and more. In our web component, we map the returned data into an array of custom objects and filter the array items based on the access restriction field value so that we don't expose menu entries that are meant to be for authenticated users to unauthenticated users. The filtered data is then stored in our menu items class field. Pretty cool, huh? Now, there's one more thing. An experience site can be in two different states. In draft mode, when you edit things in Experience Builder, or in Publish mode, what your users actually see. Our component has to respect these different states. And here is how we solved it for our navigation menu component. You likely wondered already about this publish state value that we are passing to the Apex method. Where does it come from? So let's scroll down to see how. We built a custom method that leverages the current page reference object. This is a utility object that gives you information about the current page. And we utilize it by checking if the page state tells us if the component currently runs live or an experience builder. Whoa, that was a lot. So let me summarize. We build an Apex class to fetch the list of navigation menus. Then we take that information and call the getNavigationMenuItems Apex method from our Lightning Web component. That one fetches the actual menu item records for us. And then we store the returned data in our menu items property. And then we do, well, what are we doing with them? Now let's go back to code one more time. In the markup of our navigation menu web component, we are iterating over all array items that are stored in our menu items field. And for each of them, we render another web component, navigation menu item. And there is where some of the magic or hard work actually can be found. You remember when I said earlier, now, before we hit save, I want you to focus on the different data elements of this menu item. The name, the type, and then optional parameters like the URL if the type is an external website. This is now where we need that information. Because navigation entries can have different types, that can be a Salesforce object, an internal link, an external link, and more. And because you have to build your own, You'll also have to check and build for the different types of navigation that can be configured in Experience Builder. In our sample app, we construct for each type a different object, which represents the page reference that we want to call once someone clicks a navigation entry. If you don't know much about page references yet, no worries, we'll cover them in detail for Experience Cloud in an upcoming episode. The key takeaway for you is that because it is, once again, build your own, that you will have to think about the different use cases that may arrive when building your custom navigation components. And the sample app actually gives you a real good head start on how that may look like. Now, you can take the approach for building a custom navigation also to build custom footers. When we look now at the JavaScript of our footerless component, it is using the same approach. This adds additional flexibility to your sites, as you can prescribe the behavior and those who manage the content can use Experience Builder to visually compose the footer. Now, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough about how to embrace build your own and what to consider when crafting your own navigation and footer components. Check out the description to learn more about those. And again, thanks so much for joining. Feel free to like the video and see you next time when we talk about custom styling. Never miss an episode by subscribing and turning on notifications.